In this video, we're going to look at finding the absolute maximum and minimum values of a function on an interval. So what that means is we want to know what will the largest possible output of this function be if we're only allowed to plug in x values that are in some interval. That's the absolute maximum. And the least possible output is the absolute minimum. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, just like with relative maximum and minimum values, we're going to start by looking for critical points. So we take the derivative, which in this case is 3x squared minus 3. We set the derivative equal to 0, and we solve for x. Uh, I chose a function here which we could factor to find all the solutions. You also could use the quadratic formula if you wanted to. Um, and so we see that there are two critical values for this function, x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. But come back up to our interval and notice that we only care in this problem about x values between 0 and 2. So the critical value negative 1, that doesn't really concern us. It is not in the interval of interest. So we only care about what happens at x equals 1. All right, now if we were looking for a relative maximum or minimum, we could use a first derivative sign chart or a second derivative test to try to identify if what this critical point is. But for an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum problem, our approach is going to be a little bit different. So it turns out all we have to do is plug in the critical points as well as the endpoints to the original function to see what's largest, what's smallest. Here's what I mean. Uh, we have a critical point when x is 1. So let's plug that into the original function. You get 1 cubed minus 3 times 1. That comes out to negative 2. Then let's plug in the endpoints. We can plug a 0 in to the original function, not the derivative, the original function, and we get a 0 out. Uh, we can plug a 2 in. That's the other endpoint. That simplifies to 8 minus 6, which is 2. So we plugged in the critical value. And we plugged in the endpoints. And notice that among the outputs we obtained, the largest output was 2. This is the greatest output. And the, the least output was negative 2. And from this, we can conclude that the greatest output on this interval, the absolute maximum, is 2. And that occurs when you plug in the point x equal to 2. Similarly, the absolute minimum was negative 2, and that occurs at the input value of 1, x equals 1. So this is the answer to this question. The absolute maximum is 2, occurring at the input value of 2, and the absolute minimum is negative 2, occurring at the input of 1. Uh, I just want to sketch a quick graph of this function in order to illustrate what these values are exactly, where we see them on a graph. So here's a picture of the function we've been working with. And notice here at our critical value of x equals 1, where the graph has a horizontal tangent line, we have a local minimum. Now that's not the minimum value for the whole function because the whole function continues going downward over here. But because we were only interested in the interval, 
from zero to three, or from zero to two, we can really pretend that this part of the picture doesn't exist. And that's why we didn't care about the critical value at x equals negative one. Uh, we tested this endpoint at zero and this endpoint at two because the maximum or minimum value can occur either at an endpoint like it does here or a critical point like it does here. And if you picture uh, a different function, it could have a maximum that occurs at an endpoint and a minimum that occurs at an endpoint. Uh, for example, something like this would have a maximum and minimum both at endpoints. There might be critical points in between, there might not. Um, you have to test critical points and endpoints your, of your domain in order to be sure you've found the absolute maximum and absolute minimum.